The strike by oil workers in the United States has entered its second month, with the giant energy corporations refusing to budge on workers' demands, which center on safety, health care costs, and the use of temporary contract employees in place of unionized workers. In the face of this intransigence, the United Steelworkers Union has continued to limit the strike to a fraction of the workers it organizes in the industry. The following is an exclusive interview by the World Socialist website with one of the many contractors who support the strike. The identity of this worker, who has extensive experience at oil refineries in Texas, Ohio, Indiana, and other states, has been concealed to protect him from retribution. They're going towards contractor way, just like other, a lot of other companies in the country. Um, what they're doing is they rather hire a contractor, therefore, because the contractor has, if they don't like you, they can get rid of you at any time, no question to ask. You know, you, you know, you can't, you can't defend yourself. And so, if you don't do their wishing, they can just get rid of you. Now, um, they also have uh, pensions, which they don't have to pay anymore either. No pensions, no good health care. Um, that's a big part of it. They're just doing cutbacks on that, more profits. Um, and it's and this they also want to eliminate job positions so instead of a um, operator for each unit they want one operator to cover a couple units now and that, that's their way of doing cutbacks for more profits you pretty much have to work if you don't they, they pretty much look down upon you they frown upon that um, i worked um, over 16 hour shifts 16 hour shift is the, the norm you're supposed to go home at the 16 hours, but sometimes that you work over. Yeah, they'll get in trouble for that now these days here and there, but sometimes they rather get in trouble to get the job done. Um, but I think 16 hours is horrible for any person to work because you have to be focused. There's so many different injuries that could happen in a, in a ticking time bomb. You never get to see your kids grow up because you're always working or you're always on call or you're supposed to work um, eight hours and you're going to work in 16 hours. Um, and shutdown season, you know, there's been times I worked uh, 30, 32 days, 12 hour days, and without a day off. And you pretty much, you, you become a zombie after like a week or so, you just become a zombie, you don't even think, you know, you get like four hours of, um, a day of sleep. Most refineries in the country, BP especially, um, a lot of them are actually way outdated. They a lot of refineries just want to just do enough just to make sure it's running properly. They don't they don't look for the future. BP is talking a lot of money into BP Whiting and BP Husk in Toledo. They have um, did a lot of improvements, adding new units, but that's just for more profits to get the oil sands from Canada. The houses near the refineries are, are could be in trouble. I mean, I want to have family living so close to a um, a facility like some some refineries there's a fence line right right now across the fence line there's houses and you can throw a baseball from a from a jet fuel unit and if that jet fuel blows up that house is going to blow up the poisonous gas goes off there's no barrier that's going to stop the poisonous gas at the fence line from preventing it going to a neighborhood and it, it's it's sad it's always poor, working class neighborhoods. The cancer rates uh, will have to be extremely high, not just respiratory problems, uh, cancer, I mean, many different problems can happen just from all the different gases and poisons that, that go through the soil, go through the gas, go through the um, air, which air we breathe. And uh, a lot of times uh, a certain person who works in a unit has to put an oxygen mask on or half mask on. And w when you go through, um, or even a face shield, but that's how poisonous it is. And then like uh, 20 yards away, you, know, you can see a dog and a kid out in the backyard playing. I mean, it's just not right. Like BP does the commercial, how we care about the environment. If you care about the environment, then why did you help with the oil spill? That could have been preventable. You know, like what is, I think it's a million dollar part or $2 million part that they could have replaced that could prevent it. That. And instead, you know, people died. And now the, the golf is, pretty much wasted oil does not go away the unions unfortunately i mean they all work they work with the corporations now i mean they are corporation now the unions are um i said you know the unions from um back in the 50s and 60s even are and now are completely different um 
I mean, unions shouldn't be calling a union anymore because all they want is just pretty much the membership, get the money from the membership for the, for the guys to pay them money pretty much to do nothing. But when it comes down to it, when the corporation wants to break you, um, they pretty much they turn a blind eye on you. So as long as they're making profits, they don't care what's going to happen. So the only way to really sock it to them is pretty much just uh, have a complete strike. I mean, everybody, everybody say, you know, we refuse to do work. And by doing that, they, you know, um, no, no gas is getting made and um, cross country, no cars are will be able to go on the roads, no transportation. And that, and the government will, would really be scared of that to happen. And that's the only way that you can really get things to move. Like Thomas Jefferson, you know, he believed in a revolution to keep our government in check. I think, that I, I believe in the same thing. If all the refinery guys, if all the guys, operators, um, uh, pipe fitters, boy makers, don't matter what's, who's working the ref, you know, refineries, if they all refuse to work, we all suffer together, but the long term, it's going to be right. I mean, I'd rather suffer for short term than long term. And that's what I look at, because I'd, I'd love to have a future for, you know, for my son or for any, any children in the United States.